All right, everybody, uh, welcome to part two of the bullet system optimization in Godot 3 uh, series. I have something interesting for you today, hopefully. Uh, I have completely rebuilt my bullet system for an even better performance. Uh, let me show you how. In this approach, I am not using nodes at all. Um, I'm creating bullets directly in the physics server. If you don't know what that is, physics server is a class in Godot API, which is used to communicate directly with the physics engine. It can create and manipulate physics objects called RIDs, uh, without creating nodes or adding them to the tree. So you can bypass the node system entirely and get the object related data from the engine without the overhead of nodes and hierarchies, which is pretty sweet. In this new approach, I am going to ask the uh, physics server to create a RID every time an enemy fires a bullet. Uh, I'll also have it create a physics world space, which is like a container in which this bullet will exist and I'm going to have the physics server apply an impulse to that RID in order to shoot it into that world space. And then I'm going to read the transform coordinates of that RID to check where it is on every frame and I'm going to draw a Multimesh instance, a bullet, for that RID and copy the RID's transform onto that Multimesh instance. Each RID that gets shot into the world uh, will add itself to an array of airborne bullets um, they could be all over the place, of course. And then I'll write a bullet handler script, which will continuously loop through that array and assign a multi-mesh instance to each item on every frame. This means that all enemy bullets in the world space will be a single mesh, a multi-mesh. So performance gains should be expected. All right, so first things first, uh, this is my function for shooting a bullet. It's part of the enemy script. First, we're going to create a body using the physics server. That's how you create a RID. Then we're going to define its mode as rigid, meaning that it will behave like a rigid body node. Uh, it will respond to physics forces and so on. Next, we're going to set its initial transform to be the same as that of the barrel of the gun that discharged it. Uh, the barrel is just a spatial node that is placed at the tip of the barrel. Uh, I need the barrel node to be looking at the target because I'll be shooting from it, so I want it to be aimed at the target. Point being hit is basically the target, it's a vector 3. Uh, it could be anything you want, depends on what you want to shoot or who. Next, let's shoot the red, let's give it some impulse. It will be inert because we've not defined any other forces to be acting upon it. So the number that you put in here will effectively define the speed of the RID, so your bullet speed. Next, we'll set a physics space for our RID to exist in. It will serve as a reference for the physics calculations. I don't want the bullet to have gravity, but you can make it be affected by gravity if you want. And I am going to pass a, a dictionary of three entries uh, into a global array that holds all those RIDs. So each item in the array is a dictionary containing the bullet rid, the position uh, of the barrel that shot it, and, and the shooting raycast. Uh, this is a raycast that is attached to uh, the enemy's right hand and it's looking at the player. I need this raycast so that I can tell which point in the world the enemy is shooting at and I can get that by reading the raycast's collision point. The bullet handler is a global script that does the instancing of the bullet meshes. Um, it also holds the bullet array. So let's take a look at it. Okay, uh, this one's a bit longer, but still not bad. Let's see. First, let's declare the variables. We have the bullet array. We have the bullet instantiator, which is the variable that will hold the multi-mesh instance node. And I think it should be called something like this, by the way. Multi-mesh spawner or multi-mesh generator. Um, something along those lines, because that's what it does. It creates instances of the mesh that you load into it. Uh, a multi-mesh instance is an instance of the mesh that is multiplied by this node, so calling the node multi-mesh instance is a bit chicken and egg for me, but anyway. The next one is the bullet mesh, uh, so just a simple a mesh resource. So now let's create the uh, uh, instantiator and add it to the tree. Uh, create the multi-mesh, assign it to the instantiator, make it 3D. You can also do 2D multi-meshes as well, but we want ours to be a 3D node, so let's specify that and then load the actual bullet mesh resource into it. And then inside our process function, we're going to do a bunch of stuff. 
I want to um, save some of the compute by having this logic run on even frames only, so every other frame, um, you're not going to notice the difference. And I need that compute power for my smooth camera. Um, watch my previous video if you don't know what I'm talking about. A few VARs just to keep the code uh, cleaner. And then the multi-machine instance count will equal the size of the bullet array. Because remember, we want to create a multi-mesh bullet instance for each read. Uh, the projectile is the dictionary that we appended to the array in the previous script. So we're now going to fetch its entries. Uh, bullet read, barrel and uh, raycast. But just before we do that, we have to declare an index so that we can use it for the multi-mesh instance that will be attached to its corresponding read uh, in this loop cycle. So we'll just set it to match the index of the current item in the bullet array. Next, we're going to get the transform of this flying read and we're going to set it to look at the barrel of the gun. Uh, this will make sure that the RID is always parallel to the gun that discharged it. Uh, if you don't do this, the bullet could be misaligned, like here. Uh, this is what happens if you skip that line of code. This condition is only used to prevent this annoying look at error, which will appear in debug when uh, the RIDs transform and the barrel are aligned, which they will be sometimes, depending on angle. Bullet Vector 3 is just the Vector 3 version of the transform, and you can get that by picking the origin of the transform. Uh, pause Hidden is simply a position that is low underground, and uh, and we can't see it. Uh, I'm only using this so I can hide the multi-mesh instance when it's very close to the barrel. Uh, there are some good reasons for that, but never mind. That's This one's optional. Result is using this other function here, uh, Check Collisions. So let's see what that does. For every RID in the array, on every frame, I am casting a ray from the RID's current position to the raycast collision point. And remember, the raycast is shot from the enemy's arm towards the target that the enemy is aiming at. This intersect ray method returns a dictionary of useful stuff. And I'm going to use position and collider. These will tell me what this RID's ray is intersecting with and where in the world is its collision point. Both will be extremely useful, as you'll see in a second. OK, back up here. Um, result gives me the, the dictionary. So now, if this multi-mesh bullet instance is very close to the barrel that fired it. Put it in hidden position. This is what I said before, it's optional. Else, put it in the RID's position. If it is far from the barrel, get rid of it. Free the RID and remove it from the bullet array. Else, if there is a result obtained from this check collision function, Position, if you remember, is the collision point of this ray. So effectively, this is the, the point towards which the RID is flying. So this line means if this multi-mesh bullet instance is very close to its destination point, get rid of it. Make it disappear from the physics engine and from the bullet array so we don't draw it again. Oh, and by the way, if the collider node is the player, and there's only one node in the group player, the player, so if the collider is the player, call the player's get hit function, which will trigger his uh, hit reaction and cost him 0.3 HP. I had to reduce the odds of getting hit because with so many bullets in the air, I was getting hit all the time and I could, could hardly move. Okay, so look at this. I got 16 NPCs all trying to shoot me down, hundreds of bullets in the air, and I'm still getting respectable frame rates, to say the least. I don't think I ever dropped below 100. So this method is clearly good for performance, but it's not free of limitations, okay? First of all, you're dealing with an array of transforms. There are no nodes that you could do some additional cool things with easily. Uh, secondly, the RIDs are physics objects. You apply an impulse to them once and whatever happens next is pretty much out of your control. They, they, they won't be as accurate as tweened bullets uh, in terms of where you want them to go and what you want them to do and so on. And also, ray intersection is not as accurate as collisions. So you will see some leaks. Some bullets will be passing through obstacles, etc. And of course you could create collision shapes in the physics server too, but that would kind of defeat the purpose of the exercise because uh, collision shapes are shapes too, and they will cost you. So it performs really well overall, this method. It looks pretty good. Uh, I'm just not sure I'm okay with not having as much control over this system as I would otherwise with bullet nodes and tweens. So I have one other technique 
technique in mind which I will talk about in the next video. So anyway guys, I hope that you found this video useful. Consider subscribing for more and uh, till next time, peace!